Hey, welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to discuss and you're going to learn about the average rate of change of a function. And you're going to learn why it's important. Uh, a lot of times we just kind of teach this and go, oh, what's that for? Well, if you don't teach calculus or no calculus, that's not going to make a whole lot of sense on, on how that's, why that's used. So we're going to talk about average rate of change. Um, we're, we'll talk about why we do what we do and what it's trying to get you to learn. So what the average rate of change looks for is basically, I hate suspense and math, you shouldn't have it, you should know what you're gonna be learning. You're gonna learn that the average rate of change is just a slope between two points on a curve. What they call that a lot of times is called the secant, even though we're not really used to a secant being um, uh, two points in the curve, kind of a circle idea is more what it's, it's, it's used from, but we call it this anyway. It says this. It says, suppose that you have this curve, this, this function of x, and it looks like the black curve here, and you want to find the slope of that curve. Well, well, how in the world would you find the slope of a curve? <laughs> you can't, can't do that, right? Uh, and so you go, yeah, yeah, you can't, you can't really do it. So can you find the slope between two, two points on that curve? You say, yes. Okay, so if a slope is a rate of change, and I can't really find it at a point on this curve, well, we can find the average rate of change by finding the slope between two points on that curve. So we say, all right, well, here's a point, here's a point, and if I find the slope of that line that's connecting them, we call that a secant line, then the slope of that line would be the average slope of the curve between those two points. That's the idea. And somewhere, this is pretty cool, but somewhere between this point and that point, the slope of the curve will actually equal the slope of that, uh, that secant line. Now, why, why would you learn it? Well, the, the main question there was, hey, can I find the slope of a curve at a point? And the answer is, yes, you can, using calculus. And so what this idea is, is, man, if I can find the slope of this line, and I really am looking for the slope of this curve at that one point, does this slope of the line represent the slope of what we call the tangent line? Does it represent it? Yes. Does it represent it well? No, because this is much steeper than that. So this slope of the secant line would be much steeper than the slope of the tangent line. Can I make it better? The answer is maybe. What if I start moving this B value closer to this A value? Well, then this point would get closer and 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 closer. And notice mathematically, I can make it as close as I want without actually touching that A value. And the one of the, the theorems of calculus, our, our derivative, is that when we make that close, that point so close as to be negligibly different, then the slope of that secant line that we're getting is actually, by definition, the slope of the tangent line that, that we're trying to find. And so that's what we're stemming from. And this, it all starts with your idea of, can you find the slope between these two points and find an average rate of change? Yes. And then later on, we'll be making this closer and closer to find an instantaneous rate of change and not an average. So the slope of a curve at a point, or slope of a tangent line to that curve at a point. So the average rate of change in, in long story, maybe real short, it's really just the slope between two points. I'm gonna prove that to you right now. So if I'm trying to find the slope of this original secant line, and I say, well, here, here's a point. It has a, an x value, an input of a. Well, it would have an output of f of a. Yeah, sure, because the point here would be x comma y. And we're so used to doing our notation now that we understand that that's just input output. Well, but this is also just an x comma y. And input and output, but, but wait a second. Wait a second. What, what this formula does, it says you, you have an output minus an output over an input minus an input, and this is one point, and this is one point. So, so this, is, this is an x value and its corresponding y value. This is a different x value and its corresponding different y value. And if you look at it like that, you say this is, so wait a minute, f of b, this is an output minus, okay, f of a, another output, over the input that relates to that output minus the input that relates to the other output. The average rate of change just gives you a slope formula. It's just a different way to look at it. Output minus output over input minus input, one point, another point. Y2 minus Y1, output subtracted. 
over x2 minus x1 input subtracted. It's just the slope. So the, the reason why we have the term average rate of change instead of slope is that because when we're looking at this particular situation, we're saying I can't find the slope of a curve. We're going to do that in calculus, but I'm just kind of finding out what is the rate of change between these two points on that curve in average. And that's why they call it average rate of change and not just slope. But essentially, you're just finding the slope of a secant line. And so the slope formula is, is practically the same. Now, how we, how we do it? Well, if this is just a slope formula, and we're just subtracting uh, y values and x values, we can find the average rate of change of any function if we have two inputs. So, so what's the idea? The idea is if I want to find average rate of change, that's a curve, yeah, it's a parabola, much like this one is. But if I want to find the average rate of change between two x values, let's find the points first and let's just do the slope formula. That's the same thing. Well, how, wait a minute, how do I find points? And we spent a long time doing that. So if I have a point where my x value is 3 and a point where my x value is 5, can you find the y values? Yeah, sure. We just plug them into the function. The function gives us outputs for any input. So if this says my output for an input of 3 would be, let's plug in 3. If I plug in 3, I'm going to get 3 squared, that's 9, minus 6 is 3. If I plug in 5, so we're just finding f of 3. We're finding f of 5. Notice how this kind of makes this formula nice for us. f of 3 is the output value, f of 5 is our output value, and then 3 and 5 are our input values. So we're going to be putting output of 5, output of 3, and then 5 and 3. It's going to be the same thing, it just looks, it is slope formula. So if we plug in 5 to our function to find the output for that corresponding input, let's see, 25 minus 10 is 15. Those are the two points, you got to see it. These are two points on that curve. We plugged in 3 to find the output, we plugged in 5 to find the output, and now we're going to find the slope between those two points of a secant line that's connecting them. That is an average rate of change of that parabola. It's saying this is the way the function is changing slope-wise on average. So our average rate of change is really just slope. How I do slope is the same every single time. I make up my slope formula. I know the slope formula subtracts outputs and then subtracts inputs. I know that this has to stem from one point and so does this. So when I do the slope formula, I just find one point like a 5 comma 15. I make sure I put 5 comma 15 outputs on top. I put 3 comma 3 outputs on top. So here's my 1.515, here's my other point, 3 comma 3, and my outputs are on top uh, on my numerator. So that gives us the, the slope formula very easily. Let's make sure this works though. Is this f of 5, is this f of b, or f of whatever the output input is, is this f of 5? Yeah, that's, that's our f of 5. This right here is f of 3, that's the output value from that point. And then we have over 5 minus Three. So it, it does work just the slope. Average, average rate of change here, 15 minus 3 gives us 12. 5 minus 3 is 2. That gives us an average rate of change or slope of 6. That's the slope between these two points. That's a slope of two points that are on that graph, which is averaging the rate of change between those two points for that particular function. Uh, that's, that's about all there really is to it. If you wanted to find the equation of the secant line, this right here would act as your m, and you choose one point that they give you, like 3 comma 3, and we'd say, okay, y minus y1 equals m, x minus x1. It's just the, the equation of a line, and since it's, we're talking about a secant line here, we'd use this slope with one of those points. So y minus, let's say, 3, because that seems like a smaller, smaller values, equals 6 and then x minus 3. x values and y values are the same there. So y minus 3 would give us 6x minus 18, and let's just add 3. So y would equal 6x minus 15. So if you were to graph this, and you were to graph this, 
that line is going to intersect that graph at exactly those points, and the slope of that line is six, which would be the average rate of change of that graph. That's what average rate of change means. I hope I explained that well enough that it's just a slope of a secant line that's touching the graph at two points, and it's averaging the rate of change of that function. It just it's it's just the slope formula kind of made fancy. So hope that makes sense. Uh, hopefully you understand why we're learning it, so that eventually we'll get down to to a calculus idea um, when you when we get there. So hope you're with me. Have a great day.